Hello, it's time for French Politics here on France 24. I'm Mark Perlman. Coming up on today's show, the government unveils a highly controversial immigration and asylum bill. Also this week, the opposition leader finds himself in the hot seat for lashing out at pretty much everyone, including his own camp. And finally, one of France's main student unions is embroiled in a sexual abuse scandal. We want to be firm, but we also want to be human at the same time. Many have called it an impossible balancing act. The government presented its much-awaited bill on immigration and asylum this week, promising tougher sanctions, but also improved procedures for migrants. Highly anticipated, but still divisive, the government of Emmanuel Macron unveiled its immigration bill. It's aimed at tightening practices in France and streamlining them with the rest of Europe. The government says it wants to make the system firm but fair and reduce the asylum application process to six months from the current one year. Why do we want to reduce it to six months? Because for those people who need asylum, it's best to get them started in the process and into a way of life in France as soon as possible. But for those who are expelled in six months, well, they wouldn't have lost their family ties nor contact with their country of origin. Interior Minister Gérard Collomb offered a defence for one of the most contentious measures proposed, increasing the number of days migrants can be detained from 45 to 90. A certain number of people said it was shocking. But you should know the European Directive allows detention periods to be fixed at between 6 to 18 months. The government's proposals have not gone down well with rights organizations who say they are anything but fair. This is a law that should fulfill what President Macron said in Calais when he called for humanity and firmness. The interior minister must be hard of hearing because he has heard firmness, firmness. Last year, 100,000 people applied for asylum in France and only around 36% were granted approval. The immigration bill is set to be debated in Parliament in April and the government is confident it will pass despite resistance from members of the president's own party. In the meantime, Laurent Vauquier, the leader of the opposition Conservative Party, is clearly in the eye of the storm. The reason? Excerpts of colorful off-the-record remarks he made to university students. Those remarks were leaked to a media outlet. In them, Vauquier unloads on almost everyone, from President Macron to unions to some of his party rivals, and most damagingly, on former President Nicolas Sarkozy, the man who endorsed him to become party leader. Let's take a listen to some of those remarks. Nicolas Sarkozy had reached a point where he checked the cell phones of everyone going into the cabinet meeting. He'd wiretap their phones to get their emails and text messages to know what each of his ministers was saying as they went into the meeting. Have you seen those clowns from En Marche? They all vote the same way. When they dare to break ranks, they get a rap on the knuckles. There's no balance of power in France. It's a total dictatorship. Well, his remarks about the MPs of the majority party strictly obeying the president did not go down well. That's a fact. Let's hear from one of those MPs speaking to France 24 earlier this week. These words are unworthy and not at the level of the leader of a large opposition party. When you insult everyone, the unions, the business community, your own political friends, the MPs, democracy, when you accuse the former president, Nicolas Sarkozy, of wiretapping his own ministers, honestly, we're in a democratic debate that is very far from the expectations of the French people. After a few days, Laurent Vauquier eventually spoke to French television and he stood his ground, presenting himself as a straight shooter, except regarding Nicolas Sarkozy. Let's take a listen. I take full responsibility for my words. I obviously do not use the same words when I'm in a class with 30 students or when I'm here on the set in front of you, but it's exactly the same message. 
I have the same convictions because I do not have a double language. You see what I've said on Nicolas Sarkozy. Those are the only words that I regret, and I truly regret saying them. I apologize to Nicolas Sarkozy, and I did it not only on a political level, but because beyond politics I have a deep respect for that man. Nicolas Sarkozy, of course, remained hugely popular among his party faithful, so Laurent Wauquiez had no choice but to retreat, especially because he was reportedly hammered by the former president when he called him to say, I'm sorry. In the meantime, the sexual scandals continue to reverberate here in France. Two ministers have been accused of sexual misconduct. The former head of the youth wing of the Socialist Party has been described in news report as a sexual predator, and now, one of France's leading student unions finds itself in the crosshairs according to an in-depth investigation by the daily Libération. A body dedicated to defending students' rights, accused of fostering a culture of sexual predation. Sixteen women have told the Libération newspaper that they were the victims of everything from sexual intimidation to rape by senior figures at one of France's largest student unions. For one former member of UNEF, sexual harassment was nothing less than the leadership's way of operating. Young union members were particularly vulnerable to this sort of intimidation. They were confronted with people in senior positions, in an organization where there was a strong sense of hierarchy. It was a culture that was demanding and that had an impact on people's private lives. That's what allowed a culture of sexism to flourish at the heart of the organization. Female members' sex lives were closely monitored and sexual violence was similarly organized. The union's current president insists things have since changed, with the introduction of women-only union meetings encouraging possible victims to speak freely. Nonetheless, she admits that a culture of sexism did lead to sexual crimes going unpunished. For years, UNEF was structured around a macho culture in which roles were split along gender lines. That situation sometimes resulted in the silencing of sexist behavior and sexual assault that women were vulnerable to. That's something that must be condemned in the strongest terms, and that's what I'm doing today. Through all of this, we must ensure that we don't forget the individual abusers who benefited from this system and carried out the acts described in the Liberation newspaper. Acts that include senior UNEF leaders allegedly sifting through the union's member database to find the telephone numbers and addresses of future victims. Other women recount rapes that went entirely uninvestigated, with no repercussions for the alleged abusers. Of the 16 alleged victims who spoke to Liberation, at least two have filed formal complaints to the police. The National Railways System is an institution here in France. It is seen as a shining example of France's vaunted public service. However, the company is now heavily indebted and the government is angling for a big bang, which would include doing away with the status of the railway worker, a sacred cow here in France. The government wants to move fast to reform the state railway. The SNCF boss, Guillaume Pepi, met the Prime Minister, Edouard Philippe, at the Prime Minister's offices, while union leaders met officials at the Transport Ministry. For across-the-board talks just days after proposals for a shake-up, made by the former Air France CEO, Jean-Cyril Spinetta. The Spinetta reforms include a progressive phasing out of the special status current railway workers get, such as heightened job security and early retirement, the state-run railway would also be restructured as a commercial company. Certain rail lines would be shut down. The Soudray Union says those suggestions cross its red lines. People think we're focusing on our special status, but the biggest problem is the future of a public railway service. The SNCF was created so people can travel at a reasonable price, and this is all going to be destroyed in one blow. Another union, UNSA, says negotiations are still in an early phase. The status of railway workers was one of the main discussions. We're waiting. It's game on. But now we have a formal calendar for negotiations. Another union, the CGT, has called for a nationwide strike against the reforms on the 22nd of March. That date's already been set as a protest day by state workers against President Macron's aim to cut back the number of civil servants in France.
We'll have to see how this day of action on March 22nd pans out. The government, in the meantime, is saying it could use decrees to quickly pass the reform. And it is a very explosive reform. Let's remember that back in 1995, a similar reform prompted a major strike that blocked the country for a couple of weeks and eventually forced the government to back down. That's all we have time for this week. We'll see you next week here on The Political Brief. Reporters, presented by Mark Owen. It is illegal, but in the rural areas of southern Malawi, a violent custom shows no sign of going away. On the pretext of sexual purification, girls are sent by their parents to be raped by men. These men, who are paid by the families, are known as the hyenas. They operate by night to maintain their anonymity because, officially, the practice is banned. But tradition still trumps the law, and sexual initiation camps still exist. In an exclusive investigation, our reporters went to meet both the rapists and their victims. Reporters on France 24 and France24.com. Across Africa, presented by Georgia Calvin Smith. From North to South Africa, from Bamako to Nairobi, from Accra to Mogadishu. Bringing you all the political, economic, cultural and social news from Africa for a better insight.